What I'm holding right now is the most powerful Android phone in the world. It is powered by the brand new Snapdragon 855, which might just be the brain of your next device. The 855 is a SOC, or a system on a chip, which means it contains the CPU, the GPU, and much more. So I'm gonna split this video into eight mini sections. This is what you need to know. The CPU here is the Cryo 485, and unlike a lot of chips which have four performance cores, this one switches one of them out for what they call a prime core, which is even faster than a performance core. This combined with a whole number of other changes means that the 855 is up to 45% faster than last generation. That's the equivalent of taking the Snapdragon 845, which is powering most 2018 flagships, and then adding a whole nother Snapdragon 800 on top of that in terms of performance. For the GPU, or graphics processing unit, the 855 uses the Adreno 640, which is a more conservative upgrade with improvements pegged at around 20%. Not mind-blowing, but even the last generation 630 can still play every current game well. And there's more to it. So Qualcomm is now focusing on what they call the Snapdragon Elite gaming experience, which is basically a combination of features that this chip supports, like cinematic HDR color grading for games, and technologies to reduce dropped frames by 90%, so a lot smoother gameplay. Okay, camera, and the 855 comes with a massively upgraded computer vision signal processor, which is exciting. You'll be able to record 4K HDR video at 60 frames per second, encode clips into the new HEIF file format, which would reduce file sizes by 50%. And something I'm really curious about is hardware-based depth mapping in video. This would mean real-time object replacement and even portrait mode video at 60 frames per second. 5G, which to be honest is an even bigger deal than 3G and 4G ever were. The 855 uses Snapdragon's X50 5G modem, which Qualcomm have been working on seriously since 2015, constantly shrinking the physical hardware footprint until we now have something that you could hold with one finger. And in theory, this could mean downloading 4K movies in seconds and streaming PC quality games on the go through the cloud. But I say in theory because as with a lot of these things, we'll have to wait and see if third-party services can take advantage of it. Also though, Wi-Fi speeds are getting a push. This is the industry's first 802.11ay platform, and what this means is speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, which compared to many current phones on 802.11ac is almost three times faster. The Snapdragon 855 actually has the company's fourth iteration of the AI engine, but it's only just starting to get serious. When it comes to AI tasks on phones with this chip, performance is 300% higher, which has some more obvious implications like new camera shooting options, but also some subtler benefits like noise reduction when talking to your friend or your phone's voice assistant. From what I've seen today, the AI here is very powerful. Powerful enough to upgrade the resolution of photos, or remove grain, or add depth and bokeh effects to images downloaded from the internet. Okay, this is a 7 nanometer chip, which in of itself means better battery life versus its 10 nanometer counterparts, but there's more. Qualcomm's got what it calls true wireless tech that not just reduces Bluetooth latency, but targets power consumption when listening to music. Watching movies and videos will look better than ever, as the chip supports HDR10+, but also consume less power than before with more efficient video file formats. Then we've got XR, or Extended Reality, which describes virtual reality so powerful it claims to blur the lines between physical and virtual worlds. We're talking 8K VR experiences that can run at 120 frames per second. And we can't not mention the 3D Sonic Sensor. Qualcomm has been working for the last five years on the world's first ultrasonic in-display fingerprint scanner, which can take a 3D image of finger ridges and pores and work through grime, sweat, and oil. And their new chip works with it. So, throughout the presentation, Qualcomm has been dropping hints about working with Samsung, and I'm pretty sure they're talking about the S10 we're going to see early next year. But also, completely out of the blue, OnePlus CEO confirmed that the first phone to be powered by the 855 was going to be a OnePlus device. So that kind of throws a spanner in the works. Anyway, I know this video is a lot to take in, but let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I will be hanging there for a while. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.
Thank you.